Hello everybody, welcome to Thursday Thoughts. This is a series of random ramblings about topics generally related to home fragrance. There are a lot of Scentsy enthusiasts here, but there are also many of us who also melt vendor wax, and many of us also burn candles. So welcome if you're new, and welcome back if you've been here before. And again, thank you to the many people who left beautiful and detailed comments last week. This is so much appreciated, and um, Thursday Thoughts has kind of evolved into a little community that we are fortunate enough to be getting to know one another and enjoying each other's company and, and having a, a cuppa or a, a coffee. And greetings to all. So normally the way this progresses is in part one, I go over the topic from the previous week and share some of the comments that people left. And then in part two, I usually introduce a new topic and then finally share some of the general random, heartwarming, heart-rending comments that people have left. Now, I'm so grateful to all of you who continue to leave comments. I know everybody's busy and have li has lives. So thank you again. So for today's topic, oh, and you will probably hear some background noise. I notice we have cicadas. These are the larger bugs that are rubbing their wings together and I think they're mating calls. So you can think of love in the air here. But I noticed in last week's video and I listened back, there was a lot of cicada humming. And I'm so used to that. It's just a beautiful sound, but it might be different for some of you who don't have that insect in your area. Also, you'll hear rooster noises. The little guinea hens may come by and cackle a bit. They sound like rusty gates. And this is a rural road and we get a fair amount of traffic that's avoiding the main road because they don't want to go through the couple stoplights up there. So all of the above could contribute to some background noise. So it's just part of life here in Bethel, Ohio which is going to be sweltering again today in the 90s or in the low 30s for, for Celsius. So um, it's early enough that hopefully it won't be, I won't be dripping with sweat during this video. So this week's topics, I always leave the questions in the description box the previous week, but this week we're going to talk about dupes across uh, different brands and trends that you see sometimes where what Becky calls a Tickle Me Elmo scent, or a trending scent, will just take off like wildfire and be copied by all the vendors. We talk about scents we would like to see more of, or scent types we would like to see more of. We talk about scents that were a definite no for us, <laughs> and everybody had an opinion on that one. I loved it. And then I'll share, probably in part two, we'll see how this goes, um, lengthwise some general comments and then I have some questions for next week so let's get started so first of all dupes dupes and trends so this question came from Meg Beatty so thank you so much Meg it's a great question and then it was seconded in a separate note um, by deck chair deck chair on the Titanic so Meg and deck chair thank you so much this was a great topic and a lot of people responded <coughs> Pardon me. So, dupes. So first of all, Brandy. Hello, Brandy. Brandy said that some of the dupes she's been aware of are Sensi Blue Grotto bears a similarity to Capri Blue Volcano, which is the beautiful candle that you will smell if you go into the anthropology stores. And several others of you echoed that. I love that scent. That's one of the first candles I had five years ago, and um, and I loved it. So I'm always looking for dupes of that. Brandy also mentioned that Scentsy Lucky in Love, Victoria's Secret Love Spell, and Sensationals from Walmart Magic Spell are all quite similar. The last one she mentioned was Scentsy Sugar is a great deal like Aqualina Pink Sugar. And boy, haven't we seen pink sugar in everything. So uh, thank you, Brandy. I think those are, those are classic, aren't they? Those are dupes. I think we're all 
We've all smelled that each of those at least once in our lives. Meg Beatty, hello Meg, also called out Scentsy Blue Grotto and to her this is similar to Colonial Candle Lime Grove. And now I simply must get a hold of that can of that uh, melt. Colonial Candle is, in fact I have an example here for later on, but Colonial Candle is these oval simmer snaps. They don't make these anymore. I love these very soft wax, very messy, but I, I just loved it and beautiful fragrances. So Lime Grove, I have not tried from Colonial Candle. Then Meg also mentioned Totally Mini from Scentsy. Bath & Body Works Caribbean Escape and Scentsy Star Apple and Freesia is all having some similarities. So she, she said they're not identical, but that they evoke a similar scent response in her. Then these next two I enjoyed so much. She said, Drew some similarities to Lip Smackers, which is a kind of lip gloss. And um, said Berry Bright from Scentsy smells a lot like Blue Raspberry Lip Smackers. And Strawberry Basil from Scentsy smells like Strawberry Lip Smackers, which she said has a very plastic smell to it. I got a kick out of that. Those Lip Smackers, I hadn't thought about those for years. I think I used to use them. Um, a Dr. Pepper, which is sort of a um, cherry Coke-ish, a bit more medicinal, <laughs> perhaps, smelling. Uh, anyway, I had a lip smacker in that scent. Meg also mentions um, to Scentsy Toasted Marshmallow and Bath & Body Works Marshmallow Fireside as being similar. And I have heard people argue on both sides which one is smokier, which one has more marshmallow, and I'm just going to leave it at that. And if Marshmallow is in the, the nose of the beholder. So thank you, Meg. I think um, those were also great examples. Carol Lang, hello, Carol. Carol mentions a classic fragrance which has been duped by just about everybody. I can think of so many vendors that have done this. So Yankee Candle Sun and Sand, which is a beautiful beachy fragrance. And uh, Destination Wax has a, has a uh, dupe of that, as do many vendors. That is a much loved fragrance. A great example, Carol. Taryn, hi Taryn. Taryn talks about two that have been done by so many vendors, which is first of all Beach Nights from uh, Bath and Body Works, and that is um, S'mores, Salty Sea Air, Toasted Marshmallow, Vanilla, and sometimes Driftwood. So kind of a beachy, woody, vanilla marshmallow and s'mores by the campfire kind of scent and that is that has been done by so many people beautiful fragrance i enjoy that to this day that's one i have to be careful it's uh, i have really burned out on that a few years ago and i'm just enjoying it again taryn also mentions pink sugar from aquilina perfume and this this one is uh, another one that many vendors and brands have replicated thank you taryn natalie Natalie mentions uh, Scentsy Love Story and Walmart Magic Spell as, as being quite similar. I think Brandy also called those out. And here was a new one for me, Natalie. You mentioned Scentsy Wasail Wonderland, which I love, which is kind of a fir tree and grapefruit and spice. Beautiful and very unique. Um, being similar to Teddy Bee's Wax Anthony's Cabin. So I have just started trying Teddy Bee's Wax, and I really love her blend, so I must try Anthony's Cabin, because I love Wasail Wonderland from Scentsy. Thank you for that, Natalie. Becky is the one who used the phrase, she has seen the Tickle Me Elmo scents <laughs> get duplicated across vendors. So at first I didn't know what she meant. I thought that was a real scent, Tickle Me Elmo. So she went, she came back to me and kindly explained that that just means a trending scent or the scent of the moment. So because if you'll think back, oh, maybe 10, 15, 20 years, there was a toy called Tickle Me Elmo. And it was, you know, the, the Muppets um, puppet Elmo. And it, it was a plush toy, but it had, I think it would giggle if you tickled it. And that was the hot item that Christmas. People were fighting in the stores over this toy. So it was quite the, the hot item, the it toy of the moment. So the Tickle Me Elmo scents over the years. 
And um, that got, got me to thinking, Becky. So if I could think of some dupes, and then I'm going to mention a few of what I think are the Tickle Me Elmo scents over the past maybe five years, because that's how long I've been melting, not quite five. First of all, <coughs> pardon me, I, I want to share with you, Dectier and I did a little wax swap. And she very kindly sent me some beautiful fragrances, one of which is Better Homes and Gardens, Watercress, and Lily. So I put, it's just so beautiful, and the scent notes are Lily Petals, Bergamot, Jasmine, Watercress, Woodland Herbs, and Eucalyptus. So I just loved it, and I thought, oh, it's so familiar. So I put it in the warmer, one cube, the whole house, I could smell it, but I'm sitting there thinking, I know this so well, and I couldn't identify, and then suddenly it was like, ah. So it's almost an exact dupe for Colonial Candles Snow Day, which has long been one of my favorite fragrances. I usually melt this in the winter. They no longer make this. They reformulated Snow Day and put a lot of amber in it. I don't care for the new version. But this, too, is eucalyptus and snowy greens, so it's that same very fresh, almost nose-clearing note, and then a floral, and then a greenery. So it's so beautiful. So now I have a dupe for my beloved snow day. So thank you, deck chair. I, I did not know. I'm just so glad to remember what it was, because uh, I was thinking, I know this very well. So if I thought about some of the Tickle Me Elmo fragrances, some of the trending fragrances over the past four or five years. So when I first started melting, um, Cupcakes at Tiffany's was really big. So I guess that is um, cupcake, chocolate, and toffee. That toffee note is very distinctive. That was a big thing. Also, frosted lime cupcakes used to be a big deal back then. Others, when I first started melting, Serendipity, which is a coconut and cherry blend that I adore. And that that was everywhere. And then it just it seemed just as strongly swung the pendulum swung and no one wanted it in anything anymore <laughs> and now it's coming back i see cherry and coconut again pink sugar from aquilina love spell i remember getting a love spell sampler maybe four years ago and i really burned out on it and i had to give it a break before i came back to it it's such a beautiful fragrance but it's you have to be cautious i, I have to be cautious i tend to overdo um blue sugar which is another um, fragrance from Aqualina and that one has a bit of patchouli in it so it's more earthy so you would see pink sugar and blue sugar in everything and even those two combined which is very different and very beautiful let's see what else beach nights has been mentioned that was big I bought a sampler from sassy girl aroma four years ago and it had 20 beach nights blends in tiles that was a lot of wax so I'm thinking that was 40 ounces because it was 20 two ounce tiles. I was totally burned out on beach nights and it's only this year now that I can enjoy it again. It took me a long time to get over that. I just didn't want to smell it. It's such a beautiful, you know, beach nights again. It's s'mores, toasted marshmallow, driftwood, vanilla. What else is in there? I think those are the main ones. Yeah, salty sea air. So oh, that was a big thing maybe four years ago. Salty sea air by itself and blends. Then that I burned out on that too. That's a very, very can be quite pungent. And if we go back to Natalie's scent memory of the beaches when she was growing up, it can be quite potent salty sea air. And you know, a little bit goes a long way, doesn't it? I have burned out on that in the past and now I'm loving it again. A couple years ago, and even last year, frosted animal cookies. Wasn't that in everything? Every vendor was doing frosted animal cookies. <laughs> just to the point where you never wanted to hear of another frosted animal cookie. Then uh, others of more recent, strawberry pound cake, and a lot of these were from originally from Bath and Body Works, weren't they? Strawberry pound cake. Um, also, Boardwalk Marshmallow Clouds, which is still being done quite a bit today. I love that. So that is um, yes, it, vanilla, Amber, marshmallow. I think those are the main notes in that. I really love that, and I'm not a big amber fan, but oh, that's so pretty. And that gets blended with everything. 
So, and that, that also is a Bath and Body Works one. And then another one from the last couple years was from um, Sol de Janeiro, the Boom Boom Cream. So it's a pistachio, caramel, vanilla uh, blend. It's very luxurious, very sultry and, and beachy-like as well. Maybe that's just from all the associations. But that appeared across all the vendors. So it's interesting this year, I'm seeing um, beach nights appearing again. That, there was kind of a lull, wasn't there? And now it's, it seems to be back. So thanks to everybody. The, the dupes section, that was very interesting. And I thoroughly enjoyed reading all of those. So thank you all. Then we talked about last, well, another, the next question last week was, um, what do we want to see more of? We're at 15 minutes, okay. I wiped out all the storage on this on this uh, tablet, so hopefully it'll be gracious. It isn't giving me any kind of um, indication as to how long. Sometimes it gives you a little note. You give, you know, 40 minutes, which I love, but we'll keep going. So things we would want to see more of, and this question came from Cindy, so thank you, Cindy. And I, this one people were very detailed and very enthusiastic about. So first of all, Linda, Linda H. Hi, Linda. Linda said she would like to see more spicy, earthy scents, such as patchouli blends, and also more complex blends like vanilla oud. Several of you mentioned vanilla oud. And uh, Linda said that she's enjoying patchouli blends now. She said she was, she didn't grow up a hippie, but she's living her hippiness now. A little bit me too, Linda. So she wants to see more patchouli blends. So Linda, I just wanted to show you one. This is probably my favorite patchouli blend. I don't know if you've ever tried this. And I have to double bag it because it's so strong. This is from Destination Wax and it's called Pink Sari, as in the clothing, Sari. And there's the label, first of all. And it is pink sugar and essential oil of patchouli. Isn't this something? She makes it in the shape of a paisley and it has a bit of gold glitter. This is so beautifully fragrant. It is quite strong. Oh, it's pretty. <laughs> this is quite strong, so I do double bag it to put it in the my little green three drawer unit from my vendor wax because this you can smell. Even in the second bag, I can smell this. It is quite strong, but it, that essential oil, it's very earthy. So I just wanted to, to suggest that. I didn't know if you had ever heard of that before, but that is a beautiful blend. If you'd like, I will send you some if you don't care to order. Her next opening is September 1st. Destination Wax opens on the first of the month for a couple days. Not every month. She has a staggered schedule. So anyway, thank you, Linda. I love to talk about patchouli blends. <laughs> Brandy says that Sensi needs a coffee collection. I would echo that, Sensi, if you are listening. I've heard so many people say this. We just don't do a lot of, of, of coffee blends. So uh, the best coffee collection, well, there are many, but there's a good coffee collection from um, Zape Bath, spelled Z-E-E-P, Zape Bath, and I believe they do ship internationally. I don't know what the shipping charges are to Canada. But she has a fine coffee sampler. And when I see it next time, I'll drop you a note. Brandy also would like to see more sophisticated vanilla blends like Vanilla Oud. As, uh, as Linda mentioned, that Vanilla Oud got called out a few times here. As let's do more of that. And then Brandy said also she is wishing Sensi would do a perfect blueberry scent similar to Bath & Body Works Blueberry Sugar. That's a gorgeous one. I also like Bath & Body Works Blueberry Pie. So yes, blue, good blueberry scents. Thank you, Brandy. Meg said that she is looking for more authentic, fresh nature scents and that she was so excited for thunderstorm, but then she felt misled because <laughs> the description for thunderstorm, you know, first of all, it's very vague, you know, the smell after a storm. So I'm thinking about that fresh, you know, watery, ozonic kind of scent. But no, and I agree with Meg, that is a heady floral. To me, thunderstorm is such a heady white floral. I love it, but it does not smell like a thunderstorm to me. So 
I think that one is misnamed. And Meg also, this one was so interesting to me. I have heard people say this before. She is looking for more in the pool, or excuse me, by the pool scents with that chlorine note. Because you know, chlor swimming pools or public pools are usually chlorinated. So that gets associated with good times at the pool. So she's looking for more scents with that chlorine note. Thank you for that, Meg. Jane. Hello, Jane. Jane said she's looking for more unique or, quote, other scents. So when we've talked about scent categories, and there's some that just don't seem, they seem to defy categories. It's, a, it's in a category of its own. So she mentioned Hendrix, Southern Evening, Ravenclaw, Love and Happiness, that don't necessarily pigeonhole well into a single scent category. And so she's looking more of, of other scents. Thank you for that, Jane. Cindy, hi Cindy. Cindy said that she loves Bath and Body Works for the, such unique scents. So she's, she and Jane were of a mind here. Cindy said some of the unique scents that she has seen in Bring Back My Bar, did I say Bath and Body Works? Bring Back My Bar. She loves Bring Back My Bar because it brings back more unique scents. Sorry, I misspoke there. So she's looking for things like Southern Evening, there it is again. Cindy, you and Jane, great minds think alike. Uh, Midnight Fig, a favorite of mine. Thunderstorm, World Traveler, Grape Granita, which is kind of a floral grape, um, Huckleberry Sage, so scents that defy a single category. And she said, the drawback of Bring Back My Bar is how fast these scents leave us. Yes, and then she says, and Cindy, you hit the nail on the head here. I guess that that need for speed adds to the appeal and validates Sensi Club. <laughs> they know very well what they're doing. You know, here you go, these beautiful fragrances, but only for a brief time. And if you want to keep them around, you got to put them in your club or buy a six pack. Yes, the whole scarcity marketing model. Thank you, Cindy. Very good points there. Karen. Hello, Karen said that she is looking for, for more mixes in, involving vanilla, marshmallow, sandalwood, bourbon if it's well blended, and these are each, not all together, bourbon and spice scents. So each of those types she would like to see more of. And she said that she loves patchouli, frankincense, and myrrh blends. And oh, how I love frankincense, Karen. We are of a mind. She said she thought that her scent preferences uh, are reflected by when she grew up, somewhere between the beatnik and hippie eras was when she came into, the, into being, and, and uh, she said she survived the disco era. <laughs> and she has a t-shirt with her favorite skull and crossbones. It says, Death Before Disco. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Karen, yes, we have some similarities. Thank you for those. Carol Lang said that she would like to see dupes of the Yankee Candle Season of Peace, which is no longer produced, and she describes that as a clean, fresh, delicately frosty blend. And she would like to see more like that. So I, I thought about that. What could that be? So things that came to mind are Bath & Body Works Frozen Lake. I don't know if you've tried that. And then Scentsy Frosted Vanilla, which is a new scent for the fall catalog, and that is Birch Bark Vanilla and Frosty Air. Now, you, I don't know if you like Birch Bark, but that is a very frosty kind of scent. And then there's the scent of the month for August in, the, in Region 1 is um, Glacier Waters. And that one it has bergamot and citrus and fresh air and it's quite it is quite bright and fresh and almost nose clearing and on day two it leans a little bit toward a cologne scent but on day one it is so captivating to me so you might you might want to try that you might like glacier waters Taryn and thank you for those Carol Taryn is looking for more complex floral blends. Taryn, I agree with that. I think 
there are many fruity florals and while that's fine the fruit tends to overtake and the floral is in the background I really enjoy singular floral or mixed floral and floral is not lo universally loved is it so I think they all the all the companies pull back a bit Taryn I don't know if you've ever ordered from Diptyque which is a candle company and it's um, originally in Paris but there's also Diptyque US it's a bit more expensive it's a, a luxury candle luxury what does that mean but they they do have some more complex florals I really like so I treat myself usually once a year to something from Diptyque because just the small candle the small is like thirty dollars so it's a bit expensive but there's some beautiful beautiful fragrances also from Zara US, or Zara Europe and Zara US. Zara and their website is just about impossible to navigate, but they have an orange blossom flower that is so, so beautiful. You might enjoy that one. Thank you, Taryn. Natalie, Nat, my, my dear friend Natalie and I are of a mind because Natalie wants to see more mint scents. I echo that. And she thinks that's from when she was a child, her, she had bad motion sickness in the car and her mother would give her either peppermint candies or ginger candies to help calm her queasy stomach in the car. And so she associates that with care and her mom and, and she loves those fragrances. I love that. It's such a beautiful scent memory. And yes, I would love to see more mint also, Natalie. Also, she would like to see more blackberry and more palo santo. So yes, we are of a mind, Natalie. And uh, you know what reminded me? Teddy B's restock is this coming Saturday. And um, I think it's at 3 p.m. Central. Is that right? I think so. It's 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. And she has a blend with Blackberry and Palo Santo. I've never smelled it, called the Dornishman's Wife, that I think I simply must try. I understand that restock is kind of Hunger Games, so we'll see if we can can get any of that. Thank you for those, Natalie. Becky, so Becky, I love this. Becky said that, oh, and by the way, you all need to go on Becky's YouTube, um, and I'll link it down below. Becky makes Scentsy samples that are unlike any others. Whoa, there goes the tripod. Okay. <laughs> Good catch, Amy. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna pause. I think I'm gonna pause. Where's the pause? You guys tease me about this pause button. And we're back. Well, that was a near miss. The whole thing was toppling over. So it's a bit closer now. So apologies for that if it's a bit... <laughs> a bit much. Okay, anyway, Becky, you have to check out her channel on YouTube because she makes beautiful, multicolored Scentsy samples that are so detailed. Becky is an artist and a painter and... Um, Wow, her samples are beautiful. So go check out her YouTube channel. So Becky said that she would like to smell more pure scents. I really love that because, you know, there's, uh, we always are looking for more and different and, you know, more complex and I, I'm no different. I enjoy that. But there's something to be said for the simplicity of a beautifully made individual scent. And I'm really glad you brought that up. And she said that any scent done well is tolerable except grapefruit. <laughs> Send me all the grapefruit, Becky. I love grapefruit scents. So thank you. More pure scents. And then for myself, I think I've, I've said already, I love mint. I would love to see mint in all the things. Now, I'm a little burned out on chocolate mint. There's just so many chocolate mints done across... Scentsy across vendor across candles. <coughs> Pardon me. Still have a little dry cough. I've tested twice negative for COVID, but I guess it's pollen. I really haven't had that problem before. Anyway, I like rosemary mint, lemon mint, strawberry mint, watermelon mint, fresh air and mint. I, I really wood and mint. I, I think I would like mint in anything. Cucumber is probably my favorite single scent note. So I would like to see more cucumber blends. Um, the Scentsy Cucumber and Cactus Water, I really enjoy that. That's beautiful and fresh. 
I like fresh or frosty air, would like to see more of those. And more of iced vanilla woods blends, that's a Bath and Body Works type. It's, it's a very unique, a woody scent, it's kind of penetrating uh, fresh air with it, love that. So those would be mine. We are at 30 minutes, I'm gonna keep going, it seems happy enough. All right, so, so the next question was, what scent do you, can you, or would you run away from? <laughs> Which are your, your no, not only no, but hell no. Pardon me. So everyone had an opinion on this. There's things we just cannot do. So Brandy said, with apologies to Amy, <laughs> cedar wood, because yeah, I love cedar. Brandy said that she enjoys the scent of real cedar or a cedar closet, but she doesn't care for it in wax. I understand that. I, I have things like that too. And also masculine cologne. Many people said this. She said it's fine on a man, but not in scent, not throughout the house. Brandy, I, I think I couldn't have said that better. Fine on a man, but not, and I even struggle with it on a man, but, but masculine cologne scents are not favored by many. Meg Beatty said she does not like chocolate and wax. Again, other people have, uh, echoed that. She said while she enjoys eating chocolate, yes, um, not in wax. She said when she was young, a little, she had a Cherry Mary Muffin doll. I don't remember Cherry Mary Muffin, but apparently it came in different scents. And the chocolate one, she said she just couldn't do. It was just a, a horrible artificial smell, and she it put her off chocolate in wax. Understand that, Meg. It, it, it can really do that to us. Jane said that while she enjoys different, remember she was saying she was looking for more unique and different scents. She said there's different and then there's Hufflepuff. <laughs> Hufflepuff was from the Harry Potter collection from uh, Scentsy. And she said, I cannot. It's either the almond or the maple, but no. You know, Jane, you and I are in the minority on that one. A lot of people love Tufflepuff. I cannot. I cannot. That's one I'd run away from also. But, again, aren't our noses all... It's a good thing we don't all like the same thing or the vendors would be cranking out the same three fragrances over and over. Cindy said, yes, cologne scents. And we laughed together about the, uh, the sweaty individual I dated briefly in college, and that's why I don't like cologne scents. Um, Karen S. says, just say no to licorice. <laughs> you know, Colonial Candle had a, a licorice melt. It, that was the only note, black licorice. And I bought it thinking, okay, I love to eat black licorice, but no, 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 no. Melting in the house, there's some things you just don't want the house filled with that. That's kind of a back bedroom kind of scent. Yeah, I agree with you, Karen. I, and I love to eat licorice. I love anise in cooking, but I don't know. Not the house. Carol Lang said that she doesn't care. And it, again, many people have said this. Patchouli all by itself. And I would agree that if it smells like a head shop, if it has that um, college hallway, you know, college dormitory hallway during the 70s, the, the smell of marijuana was pretty prevalent and I tend to associate that with patchouli because people would burn patchouli incense to cover up the smell of the marijuana so I think that's I still have that in my head I've tried to consciously detach from that because I actually love the smell of patchouli but anyway Carol said she likes it in blends then Carol went on to say and I enjoyed this so much you will remember that Carol worked in a, a candle shop for a while that was where they had the terrible accident where a customer tried to climb up on the shelves and pulled down the whole display and there were broken candles everywhere, That which is just, that had to be so horrific. But she and her colleagues at the candle store would try to think of terrible scents that the candle company should come up with. And among them, they had hot tar. So if you think about when they're laying asphalt, tarring the road, that's a very distinctive smell, isn't it? So yes, again, I agree with you. I don't think I'd want the house to smell like that. Or litter box. So I know a lot of you have cats. I have a dear little cat. And yes, the smell of the litter box is quite distinctive. And I think a candle in that would, or a melt in that <laughs> would be something I would run away from. Love that, Carol. 
Taryn said that echoing many others, masculine cologne fragrances, mm -mm, it's a no for her. And also orange. So she said, I only care for freshly squeezed orange scent. And a lot of times orange has a spice added to it that makes it smell rotten to me. She said, anytime I see orange in a scent description, I'm always skeptical. And Taryn, I remember Carrie saying the same thing. When she was pregnant, Carrie um, was really repelled by orange for some reason. You know, your nose does different things in pregnancy. And um, she said to this day she can't do orange. So the two of you will run from orange fragrances. But freshly squeezed is okay. Mother Laura. Hello, Mother Laura. Echoing many others, masculine cologne scents. Now she said other scents that get called masculine, like Kendrick's, she doesn't view as, as uh, masculine. That's more patchouli fragrance, which, you know, sometimes the categoriz categorization of these things gets blurred. But she specifically called out the cologne type of masculine scents as not being her preference. Also black licorice, there it is again. So yes, yeah, some of us, we're going to join hands and walk firmly away from the licorice scents. <laughs> Thank you, Mother Laura. Natalie, Natalie, we know you don't care for salty sea air, really salt in any of the fragrances. Um, sometimes can enjoy it in the bathroom with steam, in the, with the shower steam. Also doesn't care for chocolate, uh, echoing what I believe was Meg earlier, didn't care for chocolate. She said there are exceptions. She enjoys hugging a mug from Scentsy, brownie batter from Scentsy, and there was an Aldi Belgian chocolate, that sounds divine. That she enjoyed very much but no to the chocolate in scentsy peppermint dreams that's a polarizing scent isn't it and no to l3 waxy wonders palo santo s'mores i haven't smelled that so i've tried to think about that because i love palo santo i love s'mores but i don't know about the chocolate with the palo santo i'd have to try that that does raise suspicion for me too natalie i don't know we have to try that one so thank you natalie and for myself, you all know I don't care for men's cologne type fragrances, and there were so many in the Scentsy um, Father's Day collection. I tried my best, but I couldn't. Black licorice, I'm not a big fan, and I think amber and sandalwood can be overdone. For me, that is something I struggle with a little bit. I like amber in Marshmallow Mint from Scentsy. There's amber in that, and mint, and that's just beautiful. It makes it very clouds of, clouds of peppermint. It gives it an airy quality. But often it's very mature perfume, I guess is one way I would put that. And I am certainly a mature female, right? I'm older, that's the nice word for older. But I am not a big fan of the overdone amber and sandalwood. So those are scent preferences. Okay, then we, I think I'm going to stop here. We are at 38, which might be pushing my luck a little bit. And then I'll pick up in the second part with um, general comments and questions for next week. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in part two. Bye for now.